So welcome to episode seven. Obviously last time we, uh, we put the engine in the car with the gearbox and that was all very exciting. And this episode is actually gonna be really quite dull. Gonna be bloody handy for people that uh, are watching this and wanting to do the swap in the future. But it's all dull little bits and pieces that you actually have to uh, put some time and thought into making it all fit because things are pretty damn tight when this is sitting in the engine bay and you actually need to connect fuel lines and inlet uh, hoses and radiator hoses and you know I'm wanting to put in uh, obviously the heater and the aircon so everything uh, gets pretty damn tight particularly over this side so this will be helpful for hopefully those people that go to do it and uh, but it will be a bit dull in some respects anyway let's kick it off and uh, get started with the radiator so this unit is still the 318 unit so obviously it's got the reservoir hanging off the side here some point in time I would like to go the six cylinder unit which is obviously a bit bigger that reservoir there is actually actually extended through that the radiator is extended through that area and the six cylinder ones the reservoir sits up here so I would like to do that one day but I don't have one of those radiators handy I kind of just want to get it running for the minute and I don't have the bracket tree being a four cylinder car to mount the radiator uh, reservoir there so for the minute I'm going to stick with this unit and we'll see how it goes middle of summer at the moment so yeah hope I don't cook it but I doubt I will it should be fine so uh, to mount this in here I've used two bottom E36 radiator hoses and uh, this one required a fair bit of cutting um, but to make it fit but it actually fits really nicely if we go around to the other side that's the second one it's a bit tight in there but you can see all I had to do with this one was cut down the bottom um, radiator hose just there so that it takes it into consideration how much closer the engine is to the radiator but yeah that was all pretty easy uh, the more difficult part was actually getting from uh, this metal outlet here to the reservoir so this is actually I had to go to the wreckers find a whole bunch of hoses that I thought might fit it's kind of a pain in the ass because nothing's the right length and BMW have like flared outlets on them um, on the hoses so you got to find the right hose with the right flared outlet otherwise it becomes a really bulky hose through here I think that's a 25 mil uh, outlet and you can see that currently flares at the end to take that into account also that's these two are two different size I think this is 22 mil this is 25 mil outlet so you got to take that into account so what I've done is I got the hose that originally ran from this outlet on the engine in the E36 around under the radiator and to the reservoir so I used the part of that hose that goes from the reservoir around under the radiator and then turns just there so I used that piece with essentially that was the, the reservoir end on there and connected it on run it along through the factory uh, little hose clips there and then I cut it and put a joiner in and that joiner I connected to another piece of hose which is actually the hose that comes from the back of the head and goes into the uh, heater core assembly that's on the E36s and that was the right flared size and uh, yeah so I just used a joiner in there it fits pretty well I would like to make it a bit neater at some point but probably going to go radi a six cylinder radiator by then so who really cares so as I said there's so much stuff crammed into uh, this space when you uh, put these engines in so you got to take a lot into consideration. One thing I had to consider, I realized once I put it in, is because I want to retain the charcoal canister, I had to relocate it to where my fuel, fuel filter was. So some cars will have it in the back, mine has it in the front, being I think it's a later model thing. Anyway, so that charcoal canister was sitting basically on top of the engine arm, and obviously there's a hose that has to go through there. Not only that, it physically didn't fit between the master cylinder and the engine arm so I've 
flipped the uh, bracket there and mounted it where the fuel filter goes. But that of course left me with the conundrum of having to find a place for the fuel filter. So I did look at putting it in the back, but I've actually mounted it using these three bolts from the manifold. I've made a bracket and connected those that bracket to the original fuel filter bracket and hung the fuel filter there and just connected up the lines up to the fuel filter and then along there behind the loom into the fuel rail. So that took a bit of time, took a lot of uh, thinking, but it uh, was all pretty easy to do. So yeah, other thing you've got to consider is you've got to get your throttle cable in there, um, which I've it wasn't that hard really, I just had to run it. I cable tied it to these uh, brake lines here just to make it a bit tidier, make sure it doesn't move around too much. And uh, yeah, so some other bits and pieces on this side that I've done is I've uh, connected the intake manifold and the brake booster so that it's got vacuum. So this is the standard hose that comes out of the uh, the car, the E36, and then I've got this little unit here, this little hose that's, uh, I think it's a GQ Patrol or something, just a, a 90 degree bend at the right size, and uh, yeah, it all bolts up, all, all fits up pretty nicely, doesn't rub on anything, and I'm pretty happy with it. One of the issues that I'm currently dealing with is the intake uh, boot here has an outlet on it, as you can see for that hose, but when you put it on there and you aim it at 90 degrees, um, the outlet pretty much runs dead on into or right next to the master cylinder. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there, whether I have to make something custom or if I can squeeze something in to get it to fit. But uh, yeah, more things to, to think about and find a solution for, I guess. So tail shaft, not a whole heap to see here. This is mine. It has been cut and welded there. and balanced and should be all good. I think we took out 63 millimeters out of the 318i tail shaft. So uh, yeah, hopefully it, uh, if my measurements are all correct, it all bolts up and happy days. The only thing that sort of I had to consider when I was doing this is I actually pulled the tail shaft into two. Um, you can see there's a spline there so you can pull it off. Um, but what I realized is it's not that big a deal because, and this has partly been painted over a little bit, but there's a white dot there, and there's a white dot there. So you just make sure that uni is flat with the uni at the back there. And that'll mean that it's all in sync because then when these are balanced, they're all balanced uh, as one, not as individual pieces. So. That's the only thing to keep in mind. If you do pull them apart, you've got those two white dots. Make sure the unis are lined up and it should be happy days. So just a tidbit of information that I sort of came across then that uh, others might not be aware of. Putting the heater controls and the fan controls for the interior back in at the moment and just sort of wanted to check everything as I was putting it back together, make sure it worked properly. And you probably also know that I took the whole fan out and all the the HVAC unit behind it. So I just wanted to check that that all worked. So when I did, it uh, it worked, but only on the highest setting. So typically this is the resistor, and the resistor actually normally goes down in there. It's removed at the moment. But uh, yeah, normally this is the resistor, and uh, basically it just creates a resistance so that the fan doesn't go as fast. And it's a pretty com common uh, issue with them if they only work on the highest setting because obviously there's no resistor for number four because it's just gone flat out. So I took mine out and you can see it here and I had a look normally when the resistors are broken the what looks like a spring here but they're the actual resistors is physically broken but I had a look they all look fine so I cleaned up the contacts on this side tried it again still had the same issue so I had a look a bit closer, and you can see under here, there's something under, under here, it's a bit hard to see. And it's got a little, it goes up and down, and there's obviously a contact in there. So I'm not 100% sure what it does, I'm sure if I followed how all this works, 
I'd figure it out. But basically, I put some sandpaper in this little uh, this little bit here, and uh, yeah, that was causing the issue. It must have had a bit of corrosion on it. So uh, sandpapered all that, uh, cleaned it all up, and uh, now it's working perfect again. So another thing solved. Another little piece of the puzzle, the six cylinder coating plug. So this is a cluster that was sold to me from a six cylinder and the four cylinders and the six cylinders both have coating plugs in the same place. Basically the coating plug tells the TACO how many cylinders the engine has and then the TACO converts that into RPM um, from the information that's sent to it. So just need to change the coating plug over because mine at the moment is currently reading like it's a four cylinder so it's actually going about 33% higher or showing 33% higher RPM than it should so uh, once I chuck this one in it'll realize it's a six cylinder and uh, adjust the taco accordingly so I need to do something about keeping this lump cool I've got the radiator obviously probably not the best one for the job but it's a radiator all the same and I need to make some fans work obviously there's no viscous fan in there anymore because there's not the room so what I have is the standard E30 AC fan at the front in front of the condenser the AC condenser and what I'm going to do is convert that so that it runs as the predominant or the only fan in this case so what I need to do is change over the sensor here uh, originally with the M40 Obviously the AC fan was just a backup or used when the, the aircon was on. So that sensor there is a bit high temperature wise than what we, we really want. We really want it coming in at about 80 degrees on the low setting. And that's probably gonna come in a bit higher than that, probably more towards the 90s. So to remedy that and use all standard parts, I have one of these, which looks exactly the same, except the uh, Tipping point temperature wise for the low speed on the fan is 80 degrees and the tipping point for the high speed of the fan is 88. So all I have to do, this is an AC compatible radiator. All I gotta do is unplug that one there, put this one in with a new copper washer, plug it in because it got the same, the same pins there and it should be good to go. I'll double, te I'll double check that once it's all in there and get it up to temperature to make sure that the fan does kick in. And for anyone that's wondering, this here, ending in 787 is the correct part number. It's from a uh, TI, right? oh, it's from a hatch basically. Um, so I got one, this one from a, a 318 TI, the part number. Um, just be aware, the later model ones actually have a different part number and have a different pin and plug setup. So I originally got the wrong one and had to go and get the one with this part number and that had the correct pins. So that's what I'm going to use for a moment to trigger the fan and to keep the car cool in summer. So we'll see if that's actually enough. So sensors all in there. Looks pretty good. Plug's broken but I'll fix that later. Only issue is I don't think the slow speed of the fan has ever actually worked on this car and I wanted to know why. So I spent the entire night tracing these wires to figure out how the whole system works and I'm going to explain it quickly because I'm pretty sure if you are going to be relying on the thermo fan at the front, you're going to want the low speed. So here we go, we've got our sensor. Now the green wire going to it is actually a 12 volt power. What happens, that goes through the, there into the sensor. The sensor's got two switches, one at 80 and one at 88. So for 80, it sends power through one of these black wires there. One's black with a brown stripe, one's just black. And when it gets to 88, it sends power through the other. So in theory, at least, if the car was at 92 degrees, you'd have power through both. Those wires swoop around the front here and head to the fuse box. They come in here at K1 relay and K6, and they activate those, uh, those wires there that have a bit more boot to them. So uh, K1 is the low speed, K6 is high speed. So what happens, K6 goes from the, obviously it gets switched at the relay, 
and the proper power for the fan comes through the relay, through fuses, through that plug down there, and to the fan. Simple enough. So what actually happens with the low speed though, is it goes through the relay the same, through a fuse, through the plug, but this is where it differs. It goes through a resistor, which is that one just there. So the power goes through there. The resistor uh, is essentially what gives you the low speed. It slows everything down. And then obviously that power from the resistor goes into the fan and the fan goes a bit slower than it does at full speed. So my problem is, and I've tested it by sort of wiring in different bits and pieces. I know that the fan works on high speed and I know that the wiring all the way to the plug is good. But when I wire in the low speed, it doesn't get, it doesn't start spinning the power, it's spinning the fan. So I'm pretty sure that the resistor's shot. Apparently it's pretty common according to the Googles. So uh, yeah, gonna have to get a new resistor. For the moment, I've just wired the high speed uh, trigger for the relay into the low speed side of the plug, which will at least give me cooling until I get one from America. But uh, I, I hear that you can probably get them from uh, from electronic stores pretty easy, but I think I'm going to go the genuine route just to be safe. And uh, yeah, so that solves my little low speed uh, issue that I've been having for a couple of years now. So now to shift into a different gear. I have the shifter linkage and the support carrier, I guess you'd call it, all cut down. I cut the exact same amount out of the tail shaft as I did these two arms. So uh, yeah, the top one's obviously alley, so I had to find someone that did alley welding. And then the bottom one's just normal steel, so I just got my normal steel welder to do that. So uh, yeah, I took 63 mil out of both. All looking pretty good. Some Deldron, Deldron bushes up here just to give it a bit better feel and uh, ready to go back in the car as per factory. So mounting the DME, the, uh, the golden bracket there is basically the standard bracket tree to hold the M40 DME, but obviously I can't make that work with mine. So I've had to make my own. And the other issue I've had is being a right hand drive car, the pedals, cluster and a bunch of other stuff is all crammed in this particular side of the car. So US guys, you're probably uh, a lot luckier than me in this case. Probably don't have to go quite this level. So uh, my biggest issue wasn't actually mounting the DME, but it was getting the wiring around everything that it needed to get around. Uh, Cause there's so much of it, it's sort of, you can't push it and pull it to where you really want it to very easily. And I found if I, I lined it up perfectly straight with the car, because this is essentially where we're looking from now is the point of view of the firewall looking back towards the front seat. This is the side of the car and that mount over there is the uh, just basically underneath the cluster. And my issue was if I put it straight, the, uh, the wiring loom would go into the spring for the clutch pedal. And if I put it this way, it would also hit the wiring loom for the clutch pedal. So I had to mount it like on this weird 45 degree angle just so that when the wiring came in, it would uh, not hit on anything and not be you know, pulled or tugged too tightly to get where it needs to go. So how I made the DME mount was uh, basically just traced out the area that I need to connect the DME and the mounting plate to. And then I cut it all out. This uh, side of the bracket bolts through this bolt and this bolt. And on the other side, it's through this one, this one, and this one. And uh, yeah, so I made all those brackets up and traced them out. And as you can see, this is an, another E36, actually the one that I'm gonna use, DME. And you can see there the, uh, the mounting brackets that come standard. Not a whole lot to work with, but uh, I figured out that I could uh, use that to clamp it to my bracket tree, so. I essentially did, and I'll just flip this over quickly, this, so one bolt on either, uh, one bolt on either end and one bolt through this little hole here to mount it on this side. And on the other side, I sort of ran into some issues with the middle hole because it comes straight out into the standard bracket, you know, 
sort of awkward place. So I didn't worry about that middle hole, but I just did a bolt on either side. And as you can tell, it ain't going anywhere. And here is uh, the DME mount all mounted up on the bracket tree. Um, 45 de degree angle, does look a little odd, but it just means that, and it's probably really hard to see, does mean that the wiring is a straight shot out the back there towards the, uh, the firewall hole and uh, it doesn't get intertwined with any of the brakes and uh, with any of the clutch springs or anything like that. So yeah, that's all, uh, all done now. So I got the car running now, even gone for a couple of laps around the block and uh, yeah, it drives really nice, pretty smooth. Did have a couple of issues though, uh, one being that I could not get the car to idle happily. Uh, so I got the, uh, the ECU or the DME through uh, a company called Bavarian Tuning Solutions. Um, a guy from, called Murray there helped me out, he did the uh, original EWS delete and uh, increased the limiter. So uh, I sort of had a chat to him because I didn't know what it was, couldn't find out. Um, he sort of helped me through, I bought a, a cable so I can put it, plug in the car and figure out what's going on with the ECU. Uh, he was really helpful, I went through all the bits and pieces and eventually we figured out that being the spud that I am, I uh, didn't adjust the throttle cable right and uh, the car was actually, had the butterfly for the throttle ever so slightly open, which was making the idle kind of freak out and not be very happy, but it did take me a, a fair while to, to sort of come to that conclusion, but couldn't have done it without him because uh, yeah, using Empo was actually the thing that allowed me to figure out that the throttle was uh, slightly open. So I just want to give a, a shout out to those guys for sticking through with me and helping me uh, figure that out. So uh, yeah, otherwise the car's pretty awesome to drive, really smooth throttle. It's uh, pretty loud, not at idle so much, but the second you crack the throttle, yeah, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty loud. So probably gonna have to do something about that before the neighbors murder me when I try and start it up again and drive to work at seven in the morning. Also figured out uh, if I try and back out my driveway here and I'm not using blocks at the gutter, I kind of smash my sump on the gutter. So I uh, left imprints of the sump on the gutter and that was a bit of nerve wracking. Really didn't want to be replacing a uh, E34 sump already, but luckily no problems. I just got to be mindful of it. And uh, yeah, pretty happy to be behind the wheel of a car that I love again. So yeah, next time I'll be uh, just doing a few more bits and pieces because there's still a bit of work to be done in here. This uh, intake pipe isn't really ideal. I've just sort of made it work for the minute. There's a couple of other brackets I've got to do and I've got to tidy up all that wiring there and find a way for a grommet to fit through the firewall. So still plenty of work to be done, but at least I get to drive it in the meantime.